Okay, so we got a bunch of uh, A2 tool steel back from Heat Treat. And uh, I had sent this to uh, Robin Renzetti out in Pennsylvania. He had a pretty big load of uh, A2 tool steel going out for Heat Treat. And um, uh, tool steel heat treating is kind of, you know, there's a lot charge uh, set up and all this. And you get X number of pounds for kind of a flat rate. So it was pretty easy to add uh, some little bits to his uh, <clears throat> his order and not really uh, ding him for price or anything. Anyway, so Robin sent this back. Um, it's uh, vacuum heat treated and uh, triple tempered, uh, gas tempered, and then uh, cryo treated. So this is like the hot whammy uh, heat treat. Um, it, you know, it's kind of a high tech heat treat. So uh, these should be nice and stable and, and uh, I think Robin said these are 62 Rockwell uh, is what they came up. So now the we got a bunch of grinding and a bunch of lapping to do. So I kind of already started. Uh, I wanted to use this bit right here, so I kind of did this one first. Um, then I started doing the lapping, and I said, you know what? We should uh, we should talk about lapping, right? Um, so let's talk about lapping a little bit and and see what uh, what it's going to take to lap some of these bits. Um, remember that most of these were uh, already kind of pre-ground and um, so yes there's some sizing to do but one of the things I want to do is establish a, a, a datum surface uh, you know an initial datum surface to kind of work off of uh, to compare all the other sides too so just kind of fix one nail one down nice and flat and then kind of work from there for perpendicularity and, uh, and size and stuff so um, but let's take a look at some uh, some different uh, some different lapping, and uh, just for fun because uh, lots of people are curious about it, and uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's let's start out with the one that uh, most people are probably like really familiar with, and that's uh, sandpaper on the surface plate. And what I have here is um, this is a uh, it's a sticky sandpaper. Okay. St. Gobain, um, I think it's called blue blue ice or black ice or something like that. In it, but it's got a it's got adhesive, just a light adhesive on the back, so it stays put, which is really nice when you're working on the surface plate. I can, actually, I should have washed my hands. I got a uh, yeah. I'll put a new piece down. Um, let's just put a new piece down. Get rid of that. So what was that? That's that's 400 grit. And there's a couple of reasons why this is a, a good way to do this. And it just comes in a roll. So we're going to pull a piece off here. And we'll stick it down. So you want to make sure your plate's clean underneath. And this is not healthy for your surface plate. Let me just tell you that right out of the gate. Okay. So this is the only one I use sandpaper on. And this is the one that when I get them calibrated and, and relapped, uh, this is the one that uh, takes a lot of work because granite will wear. Now one of the things that makes it wear is the abrasive gets under the paper and then you're kind of shifting around and uh, you know wears your plate out. Uh, so if you stick it down then uh, the abrasive just kind of is loose here and you can brush it off. So lapping. Um, we got a here's a little sample piece okay. Now this is just turned this is this 8620 steel and it's just a turn finish off of the lathe right. So um, now you can you can flatten it somewhat on a surface plate and let's just go ahead and do a little bit here okay so there's a couple of problems with this technique and I'm rotating it a little bit and I'm just stroking it okay and you can see it's starting to it's starting to come in um, or the marks are going away okay now you also see this black stuff here so that's one of the problems with this method is the swarf and the the grit the uh, um, the abraded material doesn't have any place to go and you watch I can blow it off and, and you should because what's happening is you're riding up on all that so now you're on a a bed of gravel so to speak and you're sliding around on this bed of gravel and you go oh well that's not very much well it is um, when you're talking about lapping. So this really isn't lapping. This can, you know, the limits of this are probably uh, a couple of tenths probably is all you could really expect from this. So 
Let's keep going here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go off camera here, I think, in a sec. And I'm going to lap this, and I'm going to put a nice finish on it. And then we're going to look at it with an optical flat and see how flat it is. And then we can also actually take a measurement, too, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, with an indicator and kind of sweep that surface and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. Excuse me, this is a 1200 grit paper. Okay. So, looks shiny, right? And, you know, looking at it, it looks pretty flat. Let's, uh, let's fire up the, the helium light in an optical flat and let's just see how flat that is. Now, that was all just done from a lathe turn finish um, to 1200 grit. I think that, yeah, it's 1200 grit. Um, paper uh, just on the surface plate and this when it was recalibrated this is double a uh, uh, double a flatness here so let's see what that looks like okay so I've got the exposure turned down kind of low so that we can get a good look at this so there's our there's our 1200 grit uh, lap sur or sanded surface on the surface plate get a nice nice and clean I got my optical flat over here. Give him a little dust off. Like this. And then let's set this on there and see what we get. Okay. So, yep. Okay, you can see that. Let me rotate that around. So, where is it sitting here? Yeah, so that's a high spot right there, and as I push on it, it's shifting, and the 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 interference fringes are heading towards it. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, it's not very flat in uh, optical flat terms. That's for sure. Um, this is nowhere near what a gauge, <coughs> a gauge block would be. The little lines would be very straight and very parallel. So now let's, uh, let's do a little experiment. Let's, let's do this surface from here. Let's do it on a proper lap um, and see if we can improve that uh, just with a few strokes on a, uh, a proper lap. Let me get this out of here. All right, so got a copper lap. Uh, I think I showed these, I don't know, actually a couple months ago. Uh, I made these copper laps and we did the three plate method to, uh, to lap the three together into flatness. What we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, 15 micron diamond here. Uh, I was doing something else earlier on this and I used this grit so I'm going to stick with that. Now, you know, people are curious, can you switch grits between these? And the answer is yes, um, but if you're really going for primo finishes, uh, you really need to dedicate the lap to a particular grit. Um, but for you know run-of-the-mill stuff that uh, you're just looking for geometry, it uh, doesn't make that much difference. It, it, within reason, you're not going to want to go from 60 to 10 or something like that micron. Now, you see I put a little bit on here. One of the things with lapping is the film thickness. And these groove plates really help with that. So I'm just going to kind of get this spread out. And you can see that there's a film thickness there, right? But there's also some, some of the carrier down in the grooves. Um, so to do really good lapping, the part has to be in good contact with the lap, right? And really no, not riding on a cushion of... Uh, a cushion of liquid so actually let's just so I'm gonna I like to cover the whole surface of the plate so it, I, I use circular motions for little parts like this and the idea is I'm trying to cover the center and the edges you know kind of evenly on the plate um, so that things wear kind of uniformly okay 
and then I'm rotating the part a little bit. And I'm not really pushing very hard, I'm just keeping it in good firm contact with the plate. And I can feel it working, and you see how this is darkening up here? That material, that means it's cutting. So let's just take a quick look at it. Doesn't look like much, does it? Let's go a little farther, and then uh, um, and then we'll uh, we'll check it again and see if we've improved it. So you know, to do real precision work, your feedback mechanisms have to be pretty good too. So you know, are, am I do am I improving it or am I hurting it? That's kind of what we want to know here. Now I don't deliberately charge these plates, um, you know, with diamond. You can do that too, and I'll show you another type of lap that uh, um, is the surface is fully charged with with diamond. Uh, it's actually kind of a, a handy tool, so I'll show it to you in a minute here. All right, I'll be back in a sec. Let me uh, do a little bit on this, and then we'll go look at it again. All right, so I brought out another plate. So this one, we were doing the 15 micron on, and this surface needs to be reflective so we can use the optical flat. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump down to six micron. Jump down, step down. And these are just uh, uh, diamond emulsions that I got off eBay, actually. Uh, there's quite a few sellers. It's a water-soluble flavor of, of diamond suspension. Um, you need to shake these up every time you use them because the diamond tends to settle out. So you got to swirl it around and get it off of the bottom of the container. I put it in smaller containers just so I didn't bozo it and knock it off the bench. So I'm going to put a little on here. And you don't, you don't need a ton, okay? It's not like you're flooding the thing, so... Um, and then you want to get a film on the whole thing. And then we'll just do our little do our little dance here. And it it actually kind of sucks down to the plate, and uh, which is good. That means it's getting flat. It also means it's in intimate contact with the plate, and it's not writing on a fluid film, right? So it's almost wrung to the plate at this point. So we're getting pretty reasonably flat, I should say. And you see it's getting dark, and that means I'm doing something. As in abrading some material, so. I said, I'm just trying to cover the whole surface of the plate. I'm rotating the part every once in a while just because I'm not a robot. And I don't do things perfectly, so. Alright, so it's... Uh, you know what, I don't have a, darn it, I forgot to bring a paper towel over here. Um, okay, so pretty soon, I'm just trying to improve the finish a little bit so that we can, uh, we can get a read on it and see where, we're, uh, where we are with uh, flatness. So I know there's a bunch of people out there screaming, figure eight, figure eight, figure eight. Well, I'm not a figure eight fan. I don't think it's... Uh, um, it sounds wonderful, but it really doesn't. You're better off with straight strokes like this that cover the whole plate. You know, this is something that people can understand, right? Figure eight, you're not, you want to get the whole surface of the plate. That's really one of the things that you're, that you're trying to do. So, you know, wear a hole in the, the middle of your plate. And I'm rotating the part every once in a while. Okay. All right, well, it doesn't look like much right now. Let's clean it off and uh, go see what it looks like. Okay, so we're back over here. Let's uh, get that a little white. So I think we're reflective enough. We'll be able to get some fringes off of that. I'll clean the, you got to clean everything. Any little speck of anything is going to mess with Oop, Sorry, guys. Try to do this at a... Can you see that? Yeah. So 
So, let's look at that. And yes, the viewfinder says I can see it. So that's actually pretty flat. Um, if you look at the fringes, they're relatively straight. They're, they're curled at the ends a little bit, so what that means is the edges are, are falling off just slightly. But that's, that's a good surface right there. Um, so, let's see, looking at it. Um, I'm estimating, just kind of eyeballing. I'm going to say that's a, a half a frame. Eh. I don't know if that's one, quite one. And then there's something going on on that, or maybe that's the line of contact right there. Okay, I think that's where it's touching, yeah. On that corner, on that little edge right there. I don't know, so that's a, around one fringe or maybe a half a fringe, which means uh, that's like uh, flat to 11 millionths, something like that, uh, which is pretty flat. So that's just by hand uh, in a few minutes. And guys, it really didn't take very long to do that. Now, soft materials are tricky to, uh, are tricky to lap. So, um, but anyway, that's uh, kind of basic, uh, basic hand lapping, and you can fart around with that and, and, and drive yourself crazy uh, and get it even better than that. So, but you need, uh, you need some feedback mechanisms so that you can uh, uh, tell what you're doing, okay? So let's, uh, let's look at something else. Let's look at a surface ground finish. Okay, so let's... Now, all these were surface ground before uh, they were heat treated. And A2 is pretty stable stuff. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't move around much in heat treating. Um, but what I want to show you is, you know, when you get something off of the grinder, right, uh, off of the surface grind, you look at it and you go, wow, that's a, that's a pretty nice finish, right? Um, and you look at it. Well, it's really, it's a linear finish and it's, it's diffusing the light because it's, it's something like this at a microscopic scale, right? So light's hitting it and it kind of, the light gets trapped in these little grooves. So it gives kind of a uniform um, diffuse reflection, okay? So, but really that finish is not that good when you start talking about lapping and, uh, and, and you know, finer finishes and stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'll show you. Um, this particular block is easy to show you on. And we'll do two things here. I have a, a set of these uh, Renzetti flat stones here. And what we're going to do, I should probably should clean those. It feels a little sticky. Just, it's a little denatured alcohol. So Robin makes these, uh, these precision ground flat stones. And these have been surface ground real flat. And they're at, the idea behind them is they, uh, um, they take and they highlight surface imperfections. Now, I did a little bit on this one already, okay? So, full disclosure, stroke it on that a little bit, okay? Now, you see what's happening here is it's highlighting all these high points, and you can see what was you know, a nice surface ground finish, okay? And this is highlighted even better because of this purple oxide uh, from, the, from the tempering process. But it's, it's polishing these high spots here. And keep in mind that these are, you know, the differences in height here are really, really small, right? You could run an indicator across there and it probably wouldn't even move, right? Um, but you can see little, little dinguses in the... Um, um, in the surface finish and I have a this is a, a diamond impregnated lap here and what we'll do is we'll, we'll give it a little bit on the lap and then we'll take a look at it let's see what we got here okay so the laps hitting pretty good there I don't know do I have a I don't know if I have anything that's freshly ground. Um, but anyway, it's highlighting these um, um, these irregularities in the surface finish. So this is your surface grinding wheel slightly out of balance, a spindle bearing looseness, you know, just little wiggles in the ways and things like that that show up in the finish, right? Um, all that stuff has to go away uh, for, for fine lapping. 
uh, which is what we're going to do here. Now, am I going to regrind these? Probably not. Um, this particular one, anyway. This is a, uh, a gauge exercise for me. Um, my, I want to lap all the sides um, very, very flat and very perpendicular to one another, just as an exercise to see how well I can do it. Um, and I don't really care about size on this. I care about geometry, flat, perpendicular, parallelism, things like that. So that's what I care about on that one. But anyway, that just kind of highlights uh, uh, the kinds of surface finishes that your surface grinder kind of puts out. And this is, this is normal stuff, right? But it looks, when it's freshly ground, it looks pretty good. So what's next? What should we look at next? <laughs> All right, just to better illustrate what I was trying to trying to say, instead of working on a, a heat-treated surface that was ground, let's look at a fresh ground surface, okay, which we just did over on the surface grinder. And, you know, if you look at that, that's a, that's a pretty good finish, I would say. I'd call that nice. Um, that was a... Um, 60 grit aluminum oxide wheel. Um, I think it was an I hardness. Um, it works pretty good. And that's a nice finish. So what do you say we stone that? Or let's actually let's lap it. Um, we're going to use our diamond lap here. Let me clean this real quick. Oops. Slobber it all over the place there, Mr. Wizard. I can use this one dry just for a few strokes. Okay, so there's our nice ground surface. Okay, let's see what it looks like after we uh, put it on the lap. And now you can start to see some of those. And I need to look in the viewfinder to make sure you guys can see this stuff here. But now you can see some of the little Humpty Bumpties there, right? That's stuff that's not flat. Okay, so uh, just because it came off the grinder doesn't, doesn't mean it's super flat, okay? And then the other thing to remember is, okay, there we go, that's pretty good. The other thing to remember is just because it's shiny doesn't mean it's flat. Okay, and um, so now you know we could take this over, and uh, I'd probably start with the uh, the six micron on this, uh, and uh, see what we can do on that. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, dust it on the six micron, and uh, let's see what we got. Uh, see if we if we can get all that stuff out of there real easily. And uh, it's easy to go coarser. Um, so there's always this kind of, um, it's a, <laughs> it's like a, it's like betting, right? You go, well, maybe I can do it with the six, right? And, uh, but if there's a lot of material to take off in the finer grits, it's just, uh, it just takes forever. So, uh, um, let's, I'm going to try the six and see, uh, see what that does. Okay. So this was literally like less than a minute on that copper lap with six micron. So six is actually a good grit. Um, for going from that, well, it's not there anymore, surface ground with a 60 grit um, to, um, you know, a finer finish. Now, functionally, this is probably as far as I'll take, you know, uh, the, the, the diamond grit down to 6 micron. I might go to 3, but uh, it's just extra work. Uh, what I care about, once again, is geometry. Now, um, the camera is actually picking this up pretty well, and what I want to point out is this area right up here, and I'm going to wiggle it around. Keep your eye on that area, and you'll see there's still some little da -da -da -da, some little uh, hiccups in that, and those need to go away um, so that I have a nice uh, a nice plain surface, a plainer surface, I should say, as a not plain as in plain Jane, but plainer. Um, let's uh, let's go over to the uh, the helium light and pop an optical flat on this and see what uh, what our geometry looks like. 
and um, and see how we did. It just with that, like I said, surface ground, and then less than a minute on it, uh, with six micron diamond on the copper lap. Let's go check it out. Clean, clean, clean. Okay. Clean, Mr. Flat here. Okay, can we see it? Yeah, we can see it. So, that's actually not too bad. It's, it's not a bad, uh, not bad geometry. Uh, I, I will make it a little bit better than that. Um, yeah, some little hooks near the hole. Uh, this flat is a little bit small. I'd really prefer to, I loan my uh, my larger, uh, the next one up that I have to somebody uh, to play around with. And um, I'd really like to cover the whole surface. That would be nice. Uh, I have a much bigger one, but uh, it tends to squeeze all the air out and it makes it harder to read. But anyway, this is pretty good geometry just for right off of the surface grinder and then a, a quick lap. So, okay, so. Lapping 101.